Hi, welcome to part one of COVID-19 recovery. Uh, this is Applied Mechanics. We're covering third class A1, chapter five, work energy power through these modules. Um, if you don't have the worksheet, you can download it off of our Blackboard class site. Uh, we're gonna work through our worksheets You'll also have some assignments to work on based on this material that will be available on Blackboard. Uh, okay, so um, in this chapter, objective one, define force, force due to gravity and work, calculate the work done in moving objects horizontally and vertically. All right, so first thing, what is work Newton's first law of motion? Um, well, if we've got an object with some mass, um, its motion is not going to change unless we have a force added to it. And if we add a force, a uh, few things may happen. Um, it may change its motion, uh, so it may start to move, in which case we have accelerated our object. Okay, so if we have a, a force acting on a mass, uh, we could create an acceleration. Um, so Newton's force law of motion on an equation form um, is equal to force is equal to ma. Um, acceleration meters per second squared and our force is in uh, newtons and our mass uh, this one is a little out of the pattern where it has a kilo uh, but kilogram okay so just be careful that you have the right units um, acceleration is a little goofy uh, mass is a little goofy as well um, with the kilo so just as an example problem force of 2,000 newtons is applied to an object that is 140 kilograms, uh, what would its acceleration be? Okay, so uh, we've got our object, uh, 140 kilograms, and if we add 2,000 newtons, well, force is equal to mass times acceleration. If we rearrange that equation, to solve for acceleration, mass is going to come to the bottom. So acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. It's going to be equal to 2,000 newtons divided by 140 kilograms. And that would give us 14 9 newtons per kilogram, I guess. Um, and we know that that would uh, be our units for acceleration, meters per second squared. to talk about force due to gravity. So gravity, what happens is if we have any mass, we have any two masses sitting beside each other, um, they have some sort of attractive force between them. So all mass tries to pull itself together. Uh, that could be planets that are very large, massive objects that are trying to pull each other together. Um, it could be even small objects, so things on the earth, my calculator, my pen, tend to have a very small force, but at least a force that tries to pull everything together. So um, generally we have gravity that affects us on the earth, which tries to pull us towards the center of the earth. Um, if we are on the surface of the earth, gravity is usually taken as nine point eight one meters per second squared however that can change depending on where you are on the earth so 
Um, it depends on how close you are to the center of mass of the Earth. Um, your gravity may go up, it may go down, and we could even picture that, that here we are on the, on the Earth. Here's our Earth, yes, great. Um, so even when we have a satellite or a, 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 something that's out floating up in the space, okay, yeah, here's the space station. We may consider that it's weightless, in which case at that point gravity is about zero. Um, so depending on where we are on Earth, um, if we're down on the surface here, great, here we are, here we are. Um, g is about 9.81 or so. Um, and it's going to vary depending on our position. Um, so using gravity, gravity is an acceleration, uh, and we can use that with a mass to find a force. And when we commonly talk about the force pulling us into the earth, we call it weight. Um, so weight is equal to mass times gravity. Um, caution you just careful we use weight here w um, we also may use w for work and other things so w is a pretty common character so just be careful that you're not confusing it between weight watts work uh, lots of w's uh, what's the downwards force exerted by gravity on a 200 kilogram object so gravity falling down here's my 200 kilogram object and um, that's going to create some weight. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. So 200 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. 1962 kilogram meters per second squared, um, which is also equivalent to a Newton. When we talk about work, work is a function of using forces. Um, so work is equal to a force times a distance. And if we talk about the units, uh, force is a newton, a distance would be meters. It gives us a newton meter, or else we also have a capital J, which is a joule. Um, and when we talked about springs earlier this year, we kind of created a graph with um, a force times a distance. Um, we did the same thing when we looked at strength of materials and we talked about toughness and other things. Um, so if we were to look at how would we plot work graphically, um, generally what we're going to do is we're going to plot our force times our distance, um, I'll just call it x. Um, and for instance, if we had uh, 100 newtons of, of force, and maybe it went for, I don't know, two meters of distance, and maybe we end up with a graph that looks like this across. So 100 newtons of force, pushing for two meters. Um, and if we go to calculate that, um, we know that work is equal to force times distance. So 100 newtons times two meters is equal to 200 joules of work. One thing just to point out, and we have taken this approach before, is that not only are we using the equation there, but also the graph can tell us some information, which is that the area is equal to 
the work or energy in this particular graph. So in this case, as long as we have a constant force, the 100 newtons applied over the entire distance, then we can use this equation. But I just caution you that if you have a variable force, you can't just plug it in because, well, what force are you going to use? Is it 20, 100, 500 as it changes? So we'll talk about that in a little bit um, in, a, in a second after we do an example or two, what other approaches we can take. So an average force of 300 newtons is required to push a mass, push a 500 kilogram mass 22 meters along the warehouse floor. How much work is done? So work is equal to force times distance. Um, well, I have an average force of 300 and my distance is 22 meters and that gives me 6,600 Newton meters or joules. Um, just note in this case that I did not need my um, 500 kilograms. Uh, that didn't come into play in this problem. So it's only a measure of how much force is needed and the distance that it, that it, uh, it moved. So our next question, 500 kilogram mass is then lifted six meters into the air by a pulley system. How much work was done? So in this case, uh, what I have is my mass that's sitting here on the ground and I'm going to lift them up into the air and lift them up six meters into the air and how much work was done. Well, in order to lift this mass, um, I have to overcome the weight of this object and in order to do that I'm gonna to have to provide some force to lift it that's gonna be at least equal to the weight. So um, in this case the force that I'm gonna need is gonna be equal to the weight and that weight is gonna be equal to mass times gravity and that's gonna be 500 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared and that was going to be 4905 newtons my work again just careful that I'm got W's all over the place here work is going to be equal to my force times my distance is equal to 4905 newtons times 29430 joules. Oh, sorry, times where's my eraser times six meters is equal to 29430 joules. Okay, let's take a look at this next question. It's a little different. So uh, we're adding a force to an object. The force starts at zero and increases at a constant rate to a maximum of 100 over a distance of 20 meters. So we don't have a constant force. Now we have a force that's changing. It is changing at a constant rate. Um, let's decide how we could approach this question by doing a little graph for it. So if we graph the distance of the force versus the distance, so I've got force over here and I've got my distance over here, and I guess it's going to start out at zero distance and zero force and we'll get to 100 newtons and we'll get to 20 meters and if I was to plot my graph uh, I'm gonna get some point up here and that's what my force is going to look like okay well how do we approach this problem well 
I don't, I can't just take work is equal to 100 newtons multiplied by 20 meters uh, because I don't have 100 newtons over the entire distance. So we have to take the approach that we're going to have to find our area in order to find my work. Um, well, if we look at what the shape is, it is a triangle and we do know how to calculate the distance uh, or the area of a triangle. So area is equal to one half base times height. And in this case, one half my base is going to be my distance times the height, which is my force. So one half times 20 meters times 100 newtons, and that would give me 1,000 joules in this case. Okay, so we can kind of manipulate that graph. Um, I think the question that you may get at the third class level could involve a constant rate uh, increase. And in that case, you are going to have a triangular distribution with that force times distance. And turns out that really what you get is, well, half of half of the entire rectangle or the entire graph. So if you had a hundred constant across, um, with that constant curve, we split it in half. So for a for a constant rate increase from zero up. Um, your work is equal to one half of force times the distance. Anyway, okay. One more variation on the question that you may see. Uh, you've got some two chemical barrels are delivered to your plant. Each barrel has a mass of 320 kilograms. You roll the barrels up a ramp, and we've got sort of the ramp dimensions here. So. So my ramp is 2 meters and I guess 15 meters, so 15 meters here we'll call it. How much work is done to get both barrels up the ramp and we're going to assume no rolling friction which is really nice for us. Um, this looks like the kind of question where you may try to find some angles and you might try to look at what is the, the distance and what is sort of the effect of force and we're going to draw some vectors and break this up into components, um, but it's not a very complicated problem. Um, the idea is that it doesn't really matter how we get from the starting point to our destination. So if we roll it up the ramp, yes, uh, that's what the purpose of the ramp is to make it easier. However, we also may just come across with no rolling resistance, which means work is zero. And then from that point, we lift it straight up. Um, so what that means is that we only need to account for the lifting if we're going to find how much work is done. So in that case, in order to lift it, I'm going to need a force which is equal to the weight, which is equal to mass times gravity. And that's going to be equal to 320 for each barrel times 9.81. So 3139.2 newtons. Okay. Work is equal to force times the distance, so is equal to 3139.2 newtons times 2 meters to lift it, so 6278.4 joules. Um, but I do have two barrels, so times two barrels 
is equal to 12.556.8 joules. Okay. Or maybe I could just say 12.6 kilojoules. Okay, that's the end of the first section. Uh, you'll have a few more videos to watch as we move along.